Good morning. I hope you're finishing up a good week and have a great weekend. We have some tremendous verses to share this morning. Now, if you have a Bible, turn with me to Colossians 3 and the opening verse. Colossians 3 verse 1. If you're driving your car, I'll read to you. It gets terribly dangerous to read the scriptures when you're driving. Listen, fantastic words. Since then you've been raised with Jesus Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. All right, let's go back. Verse 1. Since then you've been raised with Christ. This takes us back to baptism that we looked at this week. You remember I said the picture in believers' baptism is that you're buried with Christ in death and you're raised with Christ to a new life. Now, every one of you who belongs to Jesus Christ, you have been raised with Christ. You have a new life in Him. You're not who you were. You were a person dominated by sin. You were a person who was dead in trespasses and sins. That is no longer true. You've been raised with Christ. Set your mind, set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your heart. Set your desires, set your love on what? On Christ, on things above, on the Lord your God. Isn't that fascinating? Stop just for a minute, not if you're driving, by the way. Stop mentally and think with me. What is it that's really central in my desires? What is central in my affections? Is it Christ? Is it God? Where are they set as I'm going to work this morning? Where are they set as I go about the busyness of the day? You see, that is the key for each one of us. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Now, don't get concerned whether the Bible tells you that he's standing at the right hand or seated at the right hand. If you get tied up in that, you're going to miss the point. Christ is God. Christ is with God. He's there in heaven. Set your affections, set your heart on Him. If you do that, then something else happens. Look at verse 2, the opening words. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Now, do you? I still believe this is one of the greatest keys. The mindset of the Christian. Is it set on earthly things? Is it set on the things that we go around each day? Is it set on the material? Are you set on money? Are you set on sex? Where is your mindset as you're listening to me now? You see, the Bible's quite specific here in verse 2. Set your mind on things above. Set your mind on spiritual things. Set your mind on Jesus. Set your mind on the Lord God Almighty. Now, if as you're going into work, you're worshipping Him, you've got your focus on Him, you're going to have a different day. And sometimes, you know, if you're sick, supposing you're in bed at this moment, and you're listening to me, and you're not feeling well, set your mind on Him. Isn't it true, if you're hurting, inevitably you're setting your mind on yourself, and it's very difficult to get your mind off, because when you take your mind off, you still hurt. That's a problem, that's a difficulty. All right, so the Bible says, set your mind on Him. Well, you say, how on earth can I do that? Here am I hurting, I've got a cancer pushing on a nerve, and that pain is there 24 hours a day. Friend, I don't know how you put up with it. But I do know this, if you can begin to look at Jesus Christ, if you can begin to look at the Lord your God, and as you look at Him, you begin to worship, and particularly begin to praise, then all sorts of other things will begin to be true. Because when I praise my God, my eyes are off myself, my eyes are off my situation, and my eyes are set on Him. And as my mind is on Him, everything else falls into place. But He also says, not on earthly things. Now, just a minute. If you're going into work and you're going to be using a typewriter all day, please don't look at God and not at the paper. I mean, let's be reasonable about this. You see, you get that mindset as you go into work and then throughout the day you flow in that. But you've got a job to do. And if you're a Christian, you should be doing it the best in the office. We well, say, I don't have the ability. You have Christ. 
and you do absolutely your best in Jesus Christ. And friend, I think if you're a Christian believer and you're not doing your best, you're not being honest to Jesus. There's a sort of false thinking here. Oh, but I'm so holy. Well, what do you think his carpentry was like? I think it was outstanding because I think he did his best. And if he was perfect, I don't think that was bad carpentry. But you see, so many of us don't apply that. Well, I'm at work, and I'm there to witness for Jesus Christ, and I have to speak to th people about Jesus Christ. You have to work, friend. That's why you're paid. Now, in that, during a lunch break, during a coffee break, you may have a chance to talk about Jesus. And the Holy Spirit will give you that opportunity. But if you're talking about Christ when you should be working, you're not even honest. The employer doesn't pay you to talk about Jesus. He pays you to do a job. And because you belong to Jesus, you should be doing it the best. Now, let's see. What else do we have our mind on? Earthly things. Well, isn't it true? Sometimes you can get your mind caught up in material things or something you're going to do in your leisure time activity, and you can't get your mind off. Put it on Christ. Put it on Him who's seated above in the heavenlies. And then things fall into perspective that are on earth. Verse 3. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Oh, isn't that great? Your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Do you see how safe you are? You are in the hands of God. No one can pluck you out. No one can take you from that place. You are the safest person on the block because your life is in Christ. They may kill you, but they're not going to take your life. What do you mean? Just a minute, Richard. What are you saying? You're talking out of both sides of your mouth. No, I'm not. True life is the life of your spirit. And the life of your spirit is already eternal. No one can take that from you. That belongs to Christ, and that is in God. You are in God, in Jesus Christ. You are hidden in Him. And it says, no one can pluck you out of His hands. Remember what Jesus said? Beware of Him who can destroy the spirit, not Him who can destroy the body. We can live in a dangerous area of Philadelphia where somebody can shoot our body, but they can't kill you. You're already eternal, and all you do is go on into the perfection of life with Christ. You say, Richard, I don't want to die today. Well, I'm not really keen on the idea either, but I know that if I did die, I would be with him in paradise. There is no question. I know one day I would be raised, which takes me to the next verse, verse 4. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. There is a day coming when there will be a second coming of Jesus Christ. He will appear, and with him will appear all those who belong to him. When Jesus Christ appears, you will appear with him. If you go back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and read that over, see what Paul says. He says there, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Everyone who's died who belongs to Jesus Christ, the faithful of the Old Testament, the believers of the New Testament era, everyone will rise first. Their spirits that are eternal will receive resurrected bodies. And then those who are still alive will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And they too will be glorified, resurrected people. And there in the heavens above this earth with Jesus Christ, you will have everyone who's ever lived and died, who belongs to Jesus Christ, with him. When he appears in glory, we shall be with him. What an exciting moment. What a fact to have as you go into work on a Friday. It's funny, isn't it? The world says, thank God it's Friday. You say, thank God it's any day. Because I'm safe in God. And one day Christ will appear and I will appear with him. By the way, don't tell everybody that in the office. You're going to freak them out. But know in your heart, who you are in Jesus Christ, and what your future is, because it is totally safe in Him and totally hidden in Him. Verse 5, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Now here he goes on to the earthly things that have to be put away the earthly things that can so easily take up our minds and take up the minds of the world around us. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. 
Put it to death by your own will. Put it out. What? Sexual immorality and impurity and lust. The first three in the list, all sexual. There are so many unclean things. Sometimes they're unclean spirits. Sometimes it's just simply the flesh. Maybe all your life you've given in to these things and you can't control them. Jesus can. Put them on one side. That word lust means passions. A slave to passion. That's what it means. Sexual immorality. Impurity. Get rid of it. Evil desires driven by a desire for the wrong things. Put it off. Why? Because you're a new person in Christ. Because your life is hidden in Christ. You could never put it off before. It just bugged you to death. Put it off. And greed, which is idolatry. Now, I have a feeling that greed is an international sin. I think we see it in every nation. I think we see it in every industry. I think we see it in trade unions. I think we see it in employers. You can go through the whole of society and it's greed. I think we can see it in people who sue. They sue one another for this, that, and the other thing. Why? Greed, greed, greed. I think we see it in the casinos. Right through life, there's greed. I want more and more and more, and I want something for nothing. I, I, I. And of course, it's total self, and that's why it's idolatry. It is something against the Lord our God. Wherever you find greed, you've got idolatry. And remember what the Old Testament says to us in the law of God idolatry is always something that God hates because you put something before God himself. If you're greedy, whether it's for sexual things, whether it's material things, you have made an idol and you've put that in the place that the Lord your God demands. Be careful and if you're wrong in what's going on at this moment, confess it and put it right with God. 